Hello, good people. Welcome to Raw Vegan Rising. My name is Shane Sterling. This video is commemorating that I've been raw vegan for two years. Raw vegan for two years. Yeah. Also, I missed my weekly video streak. I had been posting a video a week for a long time. Last week I missed it. You know why? Because a crazy wildfire broke out here in Northern California. The Kincaid Fire, it displaced 300,000 people. 300,000 people were evacuated and PG&E shut off power to over 1 million people here in Sonoma and Marin counties. The night of the fire, the power went off, the fire's raging like 30 miles away, and the sheriffs start driving by with the sirens and the bullhorns yelling, you must evacuate your homes immediately. You are under a mandatory evacuation. It was crazy, it was like the apocalypse or something. So me and my wife packed the kids into the car the kids wanted to bring the cats and the fish and all the stuffed animals. And so we accommodated. We went to my wife's mom's house for a few days. We thought it was only gonna be a few days, but it ended up being six whole days without power, without internet. I was just on my mobile device. So yeah, I wasn't able to post a video, but here I am back. This video is called Raw Vegan for Two Years, What I've Learned. Okay, number one, it takes way longer to heal than we think it should. Healing, healing from diseases, healing from chronic, you know, degenerative conditions, acidosis. I personally had chronic skin inflammation, seborrheic dermatitis for five years. Why did I have seborrheic dermatitis for five years that I couldn't get rid of? Why? Because years before I was eating high protein, high animal protein, trying to gain muscle at the gym. You know, now I got lean raw vegan muscle. Eating protein powder, whey protein powder, that stuff messed me up, you know, and I got chronic skin inflammation. You know, what's interesting is that other people have commented to me in, in, in messages that they are dealing with the exact same thing, that they went to these like bodybuilding style, high protein, animal protein diets and end up with eczema, psoriasis, you know, skin inflammation, digestive disorders. So that's what happened to me. I had to get off of the animal products. Then I had to get off of like processed foods. It led me further and further and further down the path. And, and it was one of the catalysts of why I went raw vegan was to heal my skin. But it took way longer than I thought it would. We live in a society of instant gratification where we can like just look up anything on the internet instantly and we pop a pill and things happen instantly. Natural healing doesn't work like that. It takes much, much longer. It took me one and a half years on a raw vegan diet, 100% raw, to finally be free of my seborrheic dermatitis symptoms. There would be little flare-ups. Even after a year of 100% raw, 80-10-10, low-fat, high-carb, fruit-based diet, I was still having little flare-ups here and there in my skin. It wasn't until really the year and a half mark and beyond where I became completely symptom free. Hallelujah. But it just goes to show, I get people commenting and, uh, and asking me all the time, oh, I've been raw for three weeks and I still have this and that. Three weeks? Look, it took me a year and a half, 18 months to clear up my skin issues from you know chronic animal product use. So it takes way longer than we think it's gonna take. We have to have patience, we have to trust the process, and when we're dealing with natural timing, natural healing, the laws of mother nature, it's not on our timing. It's not what we think, it's what it actually is. So I've learned, as a raw vegan of two years, how truly slow the process of mother nature really is. And we gotta respect it, ultimately deeply respect it. Okay, number two. We must have structure in our diet to have structure in our minds. You know, we are willy-nilly with our our diet and, and look at the state of our minds, you know. We don't think it matters if we eat junk food, but then we wonder why we have chaos in our life, why we're broke, why we have we can't create love and success and 
all the things we want in our life and we wonder why that is and we say oh i'll just have this frozen pizza or oh i'll just eat this you know tuna fish sandwich this one time or i'll just have you know alcohol tonight with my friends everybody else is doing it why can't i do it you know but then what is that that's a slippery slope that leads us down a path of total chaos structure is freedom when we structure our diet, we create structure in our mind and the structure creates freedom. So we can create mental freedom, emotional freedom, physical freedom by creating the structure. And people think a raw vegan diet is limited, but no, it is structured in a way that creates total freedom. The standard for health has to be way higher than we consider it today in the health medical sciences. It's a paradigm that has yet to open up in our world and when we realize how pure and clean our diet truly has to be for us to be a disease-free humanity it's going to be a completely new era of thinking it's going to be a new paradigm of science and it's going to be you know we're going to have to understand the diet connection to our consciousness and how diet and our well-being and um you know our spiritual evolution are all connected it's going to be key but we're not there yet. So we've got to be patient. We've got to trust the process and we've got to wake ourselves up one person at a time by eating the right foods, a healthy, raw, vegan, whole food, plant-based diet that is, um, you know, well-structured so that it gives us that freedom. Come on, people, you know? All right, number three, we don't know the difference between living heaven and living hell. We're in a living hell because we don't have the right practices in our life and we think it's normal you know what we think of as oh you know this is a good experience that we're still in hell we're still in hell because we haven't done the work to figure out how to free ourselves from our trouble we haven't figured out how to live in accordance with natural law in a way that truly uplifts our spirits and the spirits of everything around us and so what we think of as acceptable behavior is completely unacceptable behavior. Like confining animals for food. And then we think we're going to create health, vibrancy, freedom, joy in our life. But we're confining and, and enslaving animals. I mean, what in the world are we thinking? So we think, we, we think we're living in a, a heavenly experience on earth, but we're actually creating hell for ourselves and we don't realize the difference. We can't even distinguish the difference between heaven and hell. We, have the, we haven't the slightest clue. But when we eat raw foods and we take the junk food, we take the animal products out of our life and we treat our body like the divine temple that it is, then we can start to get a glimpse over time, you know, of how freaking far off track we are. That's what I think. That's what I think. All right, number four, evil is real because evil enslaves. Evil isn't some metaphysical creation in our psychology. It's not like some, you know, phantom ghoul that lives out in, in the ethos that can come and attack us. It's not some, you know, principle. The fact that all living things want to experience freedom means that anything that takes away that freedom is the opposite of good which is evil. Evil is simply just taking away freedom. So anything that takes away your freedom, anything that takes away the freedom of any living being, that's evil. And evil does exist in this world. You know, and we can see it around us everywhere we look. So when are we going to step up and take the responsibility for what real evil is, you know? Take the freaking evil out of our lives. I don't participate with anything that's taking the freedom away from anything else. I don't. I refuse. I absolutely refuse. My heart and my conscience can't allow me to do it. All right, number five. Being a healthy raw vegan isn't as easy as just eating fruit. Oh my God, people might get mad at me for this one, but... I love fruit. I eat a lot of fruit, but am I going to eat only fruit? Hell no. No. I don't consider myself a fruitarian, although 
I do love the concept of the fruits of nature providing for man, where we don't need to kill plant or animal to survive. And fruits and seeds, of course, provide that. But we need a wide variety of nutrient-dense foods to get the proper nutrition in our life. We just do. When people try a vegan diet and say that they got nutrient deficient, why is that? Because the people who are growing the produce, the fruits and the vegetables, aren't fortifying the soil. You know, they just want big fat produce. They want big, sweet, juicy fruits, but they're not putting the nutrients into the soil. And then when we eat animal products, all those animal feeds are fortified with B12 and D3 and zinc and everything that we need. So that when we stop eating the animal products, we get deficient because it's not in the plant foods. So if we took care, then all the plant foods would be highly nutritious for us, you know, but that's not the, that's not the case. So we can't just only eat fruit and expect to be healthy. And if we do end up falling off that diet and going back to cooked food or animal products, whose fault is that? So for me to thrive as a raw vegan, I'm going to eat the widest variety of nutrient dense foods possible. Keep myself healthy, make sure that I don't have to go back to animal products to supplement my diet because I can get everything I need from a plant based diet. There isn't any nutrient on planet Earth known to man that we can't get from plants. Everything is synthesized in our body, you know? So if we're healthy, we're going to be able to synthesize everything from a plant based diet, but we got to make sure we're getting a wide variety of nutrient dense foods. So an all fruit diet isn't going to work, but I do love fruit. And I did eat a lot of fruit in my initial uh, transition phase and healing myself from my seborrheic dermatitis and getting over the first uh, year of, of my journey, I really did rely heavily on fruit. But now I'm on to a more nutrient dense kind of profile in my diet and it's made a huge difference for me. And I, I can see the pathway forward at this point, you know. Number six, truly improving our health requires facing our deepest fears. What are our deepest fears? We don't know. We can't see them until we start to take on our health. And then, oh, there they are. And then we want to run the other way. And we blame this and we blame that. We blame everything else. We blame the diet. We blame the food. We blame the raw food. But it's really our fear that's stopping us. Our deepest fears could be psychological. It could be emotional. It could be past trauma. It could be past life, you know, lineage fears. It could be unrelated to diet. And yet, if we're not taking on massive personal change and personal growth, we're never going to come up upon those fears. We have to face the the fears to get the personal development. There's no other way around it. And it's a good sign when you do come up upon fears that you are in a place of growth. If you were working to get past fears that are stopping you, that's how you got to do it. In fact, you got to look at fear as a signpost that you're on the right track that you might actually get something done, that you might actually improve your life. Don't let fear stop you. Look at, look at it as a friend, uh, pointing the way to where you need to go next. Man, I've faced a lot of fears on my raw vegan journey. And to really improve my health, to get my health where it is today, boy, I have, you know, it has been, it's been crazy how much fear I've had to overcome fear of so many things, deep psychological stuff, existential fears, primal human fears, you know? So we can't let that stuff stop us. We got to face our fears and be the warriors that we are to bring the light onto this planet. All right, number six, number seven, success and failure are both temporary. It's our relationship with the journey that matters most. If we miss the fact that the journey is what matters most, we're going to always be focused on a goal and never happy in the present moment. What is happiness comes from who we are being in the present moment. And happiness doesn't ever occur occur because we've achieved a goal or, or gotten a thing. You know, you can buy houses and Ferraris. It's not going to make you happy. Everybody says that, you know, stuff doesn't make you happy. Why? Because happiness can only occur in the journey because we're enjoying the journey, enjoying the process of becoming, enjoying the process of becoming a raw vegan, of becoming wealthy, of becoming successful, of becoming, having material things. It's not having the material things that makes us happy. It's the becoming process. So we got to stop all the confusion about where our focus is on success and realize that success and failure are both just temporary states. And it's how we're feeling, 
how we're showing up, the conversations we have with ourselves in our mind. Are we beating ourselves up? Are we telling ourselves self-loathing conversations? Do we like ourselves? Are we telling ourselves nurturing, loving thoughts? I mean, how we speak to ourselves is more important than any success or failure. We're never going to get true success if we don't talk nicely to ourselves. So it's not success that we're after. It's not failure that we're after because those will always fluctuate. Right? Does that make sense? Hell yeah, it makes sense. Makes sense to me and I live by it. All right, number eight. As we sow, so shall we reap. Now this is a saying, of course, that is, you know, connected through all cultures around planet Earth. You know, it's like the golden rule too. Um, do unto others as, as you would have done unto you, right? So the golden rule, we know this as a principle, but I'll tell you, as a raw vegan, two years, this is really starting to embody for me. I can really start to understand the consequences of my actions, like really just eating raw foods for two years. I'm, I've become very in tune with how I sow and how I reap and what my actions are and what I get in response. That's why I could never eat animals. I could never kill an animal. In fact, I will, you know, advocate to uphold the fact that we all stop killing animals on this planet because what are we sowing? What are we sowing when we destroy the freedom of another living being? We're instilling evil into the world. We're, you know, we're sowing evil what are we going to get in return? We're going to get oppression and we're going to have our freedom taken away and we're going to have evil, you know, wreak havoc in our lives. That's what's going to happen. I mean, geez, we got to sow, we got to sow happiness, joy, peace, freedom for everyone and everything. If we're going to experience it for ourselves, and I'm, I'm telling you, this is really embodied in for me. You know, it's real stuff. The golden rule is real. And we got to live by it or suffer the consequences. And then we're just flailing human beings that really hate life and don't understand anything. And we're confused and miserable, you know, so none of that. Number nine, everything in moderation is just an excuse to be mediocre. Forget moderation. Eh. No, it's about structure. It's about defining your goals specifically with your diet. It's about removing huge amount of junk food. The standards need to go way up for us to be healthy. And, you know, everything in moderation is implying that, well, we can eat a little bit of junk food. Oh, we can eat a little bit of meat and dairy and eggs. You know, as long as it's in moderation, that's healthy. No, screw that. No, it's about really committing to our vision and our goal and getting walking the narrow path. You know, everything in moderation is a path to mediocrity. I don't want mediocrity in my life. Hell no. So I've really taken on the, the straight and narrow path. I've removed a lot to gain a lot. Less is more, you know. So, yeah, everything in moderation is not a motto that I believe in or live by at all. And number 10, we need to eat for spiritual health and social harmony. Spiritual health and social harmony. We really do, people. We need to eat for spiritual health and social harmony. You might not believe me, but we actually do. We're, we're going to get the, the results on this planet as a species, as a humanity, when we actually do that. Eating for spiritual health. What does that mean? It means taking out the junk food means taking out the animal products, means feeding our spiritual being, feeding the energetics of our body with our food. You're not going to put dead energetics in a body of, of light. You know, we're not going to get light and high energy out of dead food. No, we got to eat the raw living foods. There's no other way. There's no other way. And social harmony means as we sow, so shall we reap. We're not going to get any social condition that we want to live in until we stop sowing evil, taking away freedoms from every living being. It's ridiculous. It's all we're going to get in return, you know? So social harmony comes from a raw vegan diet. Spiritual health comes from a raw vegan diet. And this is really the pathway forward for our spiritual growth as a species. You know, not everybody's got to be a hundred percent raw. Look, let's be realistic about it. I'm actually not opposed to 
steamed starchy vegetables in the diet. You know, you could eat 80% raw, you could eat 50% raw, but take away the junk, take away the processed food, take away the animal products for sure. You know, we really need to eat a whole food, plant-based vegan diet to be healthy. There's no two ways about it. And not just physical health, but spiritual health and social harmony. It's key. So if you need more support, if you need real support on your journey, I just launched my membership group coaching program called Raw Vegan Heroes. It's $14.99 a month for personal coaching with me in a group setting, a weekly live call, Q&A, um, community support, accountability, you know, access to other people who are like-minded, who are on the journey to go from being, you know, eating animal products to being vegan, to being high raw, to being raw, to being a raw vegan hero. That's why I've called it Raw Vegan Heroes, because it's the hero's journey. So you guys should check that out. Go to rawveganrising.com slash membership. Okay. Hope you guys are doing well out there in the world. Hope you guys are safe. Much love to you. Please subscribe to Raw Vegan Rising. I'd love to have you on this journey with me. Please give this video a thumbs up. Leave a comment and I will see you in the next one.